Okay, this is going to be a very important recording, so make sure that you to get a pad and paper, get a cup of coffee, and just listen. Okay? We want to learn about low equity homes. And what's low equity mean? Well, I think 10% equity or less, and even upside down houses, which means there's more against the house than it's worth. And just remember this, it costs about 10 to 12 percent of value to sell. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar house, it's going to cost between 10 to 12 thousand to sell. If we run into a home that has 95 percent loan to value, meaning a loan of 95 thousand compared to the hundred thousand value, that's a low equity home. All right. Let's get started. Learn about low equities. We're going to touch on subject two, or also means subject to existing financing. We're going to touch on lease options with low equity homes, like a lease option and a sign, lease and a sale and purchase, which is a lease purchase, a lease and a rofer, which is a right of first refusal, a lease and a contract for option, which is like a contract for deed, but they don't get the option until the end of the contract. And then a wraparound mortgage. How does that work? All right, we'll get started on low equity homes. So by knowing that how can you make deals that have no equity? You're going to be able to do deals most other investors can't do. And this is going to eliminate most of your competition. Now there's a lot of sellers out there who want to sell their home, but they don't have enough equity to cover a real estate agent's commission. And that scares a lot of sellers. Some may barely have enough equity to even cover their closing costs. Now, some of these sellers are just waiting for someone to come along and provide them with a solution, and that's where you can come in. You may be asking, if the property doesn't have any equity, how am I supposed to make any money? Well, there's several ways in which you can make money on a property, even if you're paying full market value. Let's go over them. There's a subject to and there's an agreement for deed, land contract, uh, contract for deed kind of mechanism. When that's not listed there, but it, it's another option. And then many different types of lease options. And you can even do a short sale if it's upside down. Number one rule, remember this. Don't give the seller any money. And one thing to understand up front about making money on properties which don't have any equity. The first way you begin to make money is by not giving any money to the seller. Now, if the seller owes what the property is worth, there's no reason that the seller should make any money on the deal. So the only thing you're going to give them is a solution to their problem, but no money. Now, in another recording, there's a subject to existing financing video. But one way to make money on a property that's 100% financed is to take over the property subject to the existing loan. Then your exit, you can lease option the property to a tenant buyer. Not only make money by getting an upfront deposit or option money, you can also make money every month charging a higher monthly rent compared to the PITI. You can even tie the sales price to a future appraisal. And this way, you're building up equity in the property until your tenant buyer exercises their option to buy. And that equity would be your third payday down the road. Now, you can also take over the property subject to and assign or sell your contract to a buyer who wants to live in the property. There's a lot of home buyers out there that would be willing to pay five or even $10,000 above market to own a home if they didn't have to qualify for the loan. Let's talk about contract for deeds and let's talk about lease options. If the seller is unwilling to deed you the property and walk away, you can offer to do a contract for deed or a lease with option. And the important thing here is that the monthly payment that you will make will be the same as the payment on the option, uh, on the seller's underlying loan. Also, the purchase price will be the amount owed on that loan. It's just as if you took over the loan, but the title just gets transferred to you later. And in this situation, you can make money the same way you would as if you had taken over the property subject to. 
Now, short sales, let's talk about that. Now, this technique is difficult for a beginning investor. But some experienced investors can do this fairly straightforwardly. Now, if the seller is behind on their payments, it could be a great opportunity to get the lender to do a short sale. And this would create equity in the property by the lender taking less than what is owed for the loan. It's like a discount. And if the property is financed at about 100% of value, the lender already knows they're going to take a loss. It's just a matter of how much of a loss are they going to take and how much time and money it will cost them in the meantime. Now, if you can get the lender to give you a hefty discount, and I mean like 15% of value or more, you can come in with private money and close the deal. Then you could do any repairs needed on the property and retail the price to an FHA buyer. Now, if you're un unable to get a large enough discount to use hard money, then you'd have to flip the deal directly to a pre-qualified home buyer. The key here is to get the property sold to a home buyer quickly before you have to close on the short sale because you don't want to even come up with funds anywhere near the full price. To do this, you must have a buyer's list built up ahead of time and know how to get the buyers qualified quickly for financing. So that goes through the basics. I do want to touch on these strategies. So subject two means you're taking over the payments and you're getting the deed but you're leaving the loan in their name and I generally get it for two to five years if you want to get it longer that's fine the next one is lease with option and assign the deal for a three percent fee I like to do that uh, because it's fairly straightforward and everybody knows what rent to own is now a lease and a sale and purchase they're a lease and a regular sale and purchase agreement. And it's like a delayed sale and purchase agreement and they're renting for a while. This is the strongest way for the seller to be able to do a rent to own because they're going to get a 3% earnest money fee if for some reason they don't buy. So that gives them security in case the, the buyer defaults. And then what you can do is to assign that deal or sell your paperwork for another 3% so that the buyer is paying 3% to you and 3% to the seller. A lease and a rofer or a right of first refusal is a way to make the tenant feel like they have a good chance of getting the mortgage, especially if you have counseling for them to get their FICO score up and to help them with their student loan debt or their credit report, whatever they need to be able to get the mortgage. The right of first refusal makes them feel good about getting it. Now, this next one, a lease and contract for option, this is like a contract for deed, but instead you're going to do a contract for an option to purchase where they have to complete the lease to get the contract. So we basically put an option in escrow, but they don't get it until they finish the lease. Wraparound mortgage, purchase, what we do there is we buy on a wrap, and a wraparound mortgage, let me give you an example, Let's say we had 10% equity, so they owed $90,000 on a $100,000 house. We would buy it on a wrap, and we would pay whatever that uh, debt service is for the $90,000, and then we would either lease it out or do some kind of a lease with option as an exit on the wrap. Now, I do want to talk about due on sale clauses a little bit. If you do a subject to or a wrap, or an agreement for deed that does give rise to the due on sale clause but if you do them correctly these uh, loans do not get called due in fact over 30 years all the deals that I've done for myself I've never had the loan called due so if you do them properly you should be in good shape so just remember if you have low equity deals it's probably one of the fastest ways to make money because you can make three percent in about 10 hours of work but you need your systems in place if you want any more information please just call this phone number 818-570-0840 and I'll be glad to talk to you about this this can be a, a, a business strategy all by itself thank you so much for your your time and listening to low equity home investing